twice. Okay. Take two. All right, I'm out here. Bike days, 2018. <laughs> with John William Provost, take two, because my phone just spat out from the tripod, <laughs> believe it or not. So I wanted to catch up with Dub and talk about winning the Flat Matters Awards last year, Nora Cup, winning the Feast. Yeah, all these honors. Man. Yeah, there's quite a lot happened to you last year, but so we were talking before, so winter training and then hitting the ground running. Tell me about escaping Canada, go off to China, do the shows and seems like you ride all these perfect spots and then you come and hit it real hard. Tell me about that. Yeah, China has been like a great chapter in my life or every year I go so there's like a Chinese chapter in my life every year. Like I have this other life there. Kind of like that video I put out last year, Made in Shenzhen. Yeah. I just wanted people to see like that. What's going China on? is yeah. a big part of my life so yeah. it's a good place to train for me in the winter but I don't really spend time there usually in the winter. Like this past winter was at my friend Steve's house. We live in the first floor and you ride in the basement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was cool. That was like, that's like the dream where you like, you did what you had to do on your computer, then you go and have food, and when your stomach settles, you go downstairs and ride. Really? So that, that's the, that's, I mean, that's like the dream, really. Like, so it's a proper flatland house. Not having to run for a spot, like back in the car, like shoveling snow or whatnot. Cause it's tough, man, in, in, in winter in Canada to like yeah, keep up brutal. with the progression and you feel like others are progressing and you gotta have a schedule to go to the spot and like find time to ride. It's, it's not the easiest, but it's, it's motivating for the few that do it. So you started the year, Toronto, second place. Yeah, Tell me about it. the Toronto event and you being the number one Canadian flatland rider. Like, tell me about that event and the, the history, what it means to you. Well, I think th that's a big statement. Like, we can always look at it differently. Like if. Like you're saying, we were just talking about Corey Fester and Pete Olsen and guys like Chase. But I'm, I'm and talking about like contest season. You're talking you're, about you're, yeah, like you're the number wise. one rider right now. Yeah. I'm sure no one would argue with that. So, um, what's your question? So, what does that Toronto contest mean to you? Did you? Grow I mean, up I've been there? going there since I was a kid. Like we were 16 and driving up there with with uh, the first guys that had uh, like license, or then we'd go up with the street riders that had awesome. like a car. So we went up with them. Now I'm just remembering that, and I remember the first time I I took part in it. I had like 43 amateur riders, and I came 42nd. <laughs> <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> it was like a good lesson to know that, like, yeah, you're not gonna get there that easily. You know, you need to. I mean, a lot of people would quit going, getting almost last place, but then at that point they they had like 45 pros as well. It was cool, man. Like, yeah, we got to like our minds were being blown by all these, and I think that was the the, the first time that uh, Justin Miller went from winning amateur class and then winning pro class. Oh, really? So that was probably when like my first or second contest that I've ever been to. So that that was a big part in my like in contest life, so going to Toronto contest every year. We drive up five and a half hours, get there, and then like all these pros were there. It was awesome. You know? So uh, yeah, winning it, the first time I won it was in 2013, I think. I won three, 13, 14, 15 in a row. And then Dom won 16 and then I just won 17. Or he won, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So I was really happy to like even win it in the first place. But then getting it back la uh, this year was cool. Yeah. But last year, I don't know, the, the second place kind of like, I think losing is the great motivation. I think it's the best yeah. of motivations. I think winning is the... Is the yeah, because I remember watching that video. It takes your juice away, you know? I remember watching that video and I'm thinking, man, Dub's on a mission. You could sort of see, like, it was rad, the rivalry between you and Dom. But we've always get a, getting along really well, too. It's, like, always been, like, quite friendly, but then there's moments where we have to compete and that's something else, you know? Yeah, but that's what, that's what you need. That's yeah. what Flatland needs. Yeah, we competed a lot, man, starting in, like, Circle of Balance and then... That was a certain result that I didn't expect either. That was a long time ago, 2012 already. Yeah, that was like five years ago. So then fast forward on, Feast Montpellier, and you won. And So what do you think? Big, That's the, the big, biggest contest in the world, is it? What I, do you think? I would it? say it was a big statement for you to win that. Yeah, that's, that's how you I felt. You put out a statement and everyone's like, holy shit. I didn't expect it. I mean, I was trying for it, but I didn't expect it to happen. I thought like, I still have like five years to go before I get that kind of result. You right. Know? Because I'm so used to like being at the spot on my own and torturing myself, trying to figure out how to like do something better, I guess. Yeah. So how do you go from 
what you said about being motivated from Toronto to Montpellier, you win. What's your motivation after winning? To stay there? It's hard to, to, after winning, I think it's hard to stay motivated. That's the hardest part. Like, what's inside you that boils so hot that, that you need to win and how many times you need to win? I think it's like it's some type of unwellness as well. You can't, you can't look at it just in the way like, I want to be the champ because I want to be the champ or I want to win because I want to win. It's like inside you, there's like this certain feeling of unaccomplishment. And I'm like, I'm talking in general because I know that I'm not the only one, you know? Yeah. But like that, like you're boiling inside, man. You know, like you don't feel enough. Like it's that feeling of not being enough. It's the same like making money, like having to make more money because you never have enough money. It's the same problem. Like, so I'm sure I'll talk for everybody at home. So I'm going to say it. So you're not only delivering on the contest scene, also video parts, but also you look after the industry. Like I see you at Flatland Comps, like battling the Rockies last year. You like, you have a little booth. Talk about Far East, how you've grown with the Far East brand first and foremost. Well, there was, there used to be a Chinese, uh, I used to do shows in China and there used to be a Chinese circuit. There was 10 stops in one summer and then there was the finals in the end. And that one year in particular, it was 2009. So now it's been nine, yeah, 2009. Uh, I won like I, I won like uh, a few of them, not not all of them. There was a good Chinese writer as well, like a few of them too. And I won a few stops, and then I won one stop in Beijing where I was doing shows in in the amusement park. And then I got a phone call from from Far East Cycles, the guy at Far East Cycles, which I had mentioned to the writer that was kind of taking part in putting it together with him. Okay gave me a call and he's just telling me basically like hey I'd like to have you on the team and everything I never thought it would lead to this point where like I'm actually distributing the brand and taking care of their products and taking care of a lot of things related to Far East Cycles but I need to clarify that Far East Cycles is not like my brand it's uh, owned by like it's rider owned the factory is rider owned so it's like a Chinese brand yeah but that stands out when you look at Chinese products because they're made they're made like a from, from original concepts that come from this one man's brain that, that lives in China. His name is Wei Chang Shao. And uh, yeah, that's how it started out. And through the years, he kept on supporting me and I helped him find guys for the team and build a team with him. And so now he has riders all over the world, which is cool. So you've literally grown with the brand. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've grown the brand with him and like I, yeah. I tell him about what should, shouldn't do and he knows what to design and not to design because he's really good with that. That's we both have our parts. So of also Far East, you've got your own brand, Iggy. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but also with that, you're giving back as well, more than just the products. Like I remember, like the way you've brought on Joris. Like I remember the edit from Bike Days. Yeah. And I feel like you helped him grow. You know, just the fact that you put him in a video with you speaks volumes. I mean, how many guys? You don't have to answer this, but how many guys do that? I don't see that a lot. And you're helping making a unselfish point. Um, maybe I read it wrong, but you're, but how, you're bringing him up. How should it be? Should it be like the rap industry where you're always trying to feed off people that are higher than you? Or should we actually be a sport like we are and try to grow like roots that are growing and not try to just step them down and bring him down because he's a threat? You know, I think there's yeah. more. There's more potential in our sport becoming great if we help each other than we always try to step on each other. Yeah. Which I get the feeling a lot of times it does happen, you know, in a lot of events and people get in the way of each other and it's real subtle and people don't really notice it. But once you're there at every event, you know, like, you know what's what's really going down and you don't, you can't really say it. There's no point. Yeah. It's something you got to deal and handle with yourself. So Iggy, done really well really respected amongst brands. I know James McGraw like says it changed his life. Yeah, that's cool that people like it, man. Um, and shout out to James for, for and writing. And also like, battles. you have all these people followed the brand, it's pretty awesome. What about from your own perspective, where do you see the brand going? I mean, you don't have to tell me like what you're gonna do. I mean, I got new products coming out this year like okay. that, that people might not expect. I mean, there's some like manufacturing processes that are really expensive in Canada that are more affordable in China that I can benefit from for the brand and then yeah i'm not gonna say what's coming out but it's not it's not nothing but like you got new stuff you know there's cool stuff and i've awesome. been working on years for it because it's hard man like for example making a mold is not easy you know so and the risk factor is high and then your money yeah. can just disappear real quick if you yeah. make one error 
so that, that that's hard but i'm happy that people like it i'm happy that people they want to take part and try the product and they see the potential in helping their, their style develop with it. So, you won Feast Montpellier, what was next, can you recall? I had Ninja Spin, I think, right after, which I won as well and I was and like... You, you, and you got voted, I remember when I was tallying the votes for Contest Run of the Year, I think four, <laughs> four were yours out of five. That's crazy. It might, might have been a pretty similar run actually, but I guess... The way you present it is different. The music, and, so and the moment, the moment is everything. Like if you, yeah. I don't know how to explain, but there's the zone, man. Like I always say, this is like there's the contest run. You're about to go, and if you're trying to focus too much, your mind, your your consciousness or whatever is talking to you inside your mind is gonna be like, am I focused now? Yeah, you're focused. No, yeah. is that how it feels to be focused? Wait, I'm not sure if I'm focused. Am I focused now? <laughs> Like that shit fucks you up, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the most important part is to let it occur. But how do you just let it occur and let your mind shut up for a second? Yeah, it's a million dollar question. Yeah, so that, that's the whole point, getting into the zone and letting it occur because you are you are you already know that you can do these tricks because you've done them a million times. It's so not do about you have controlling, any, it's letting it occur. But. So do you have any rituals that you try and do before running? I don't know, like today was different in qualifying. Was, I don't know, I just, I didn't want to take it too seriously. I just wanted yeah. to go and have fun and yeah it seemed else. like you just didn't stress it at all yeah i think you're like oh yeah i'm gonna go next i mean it's basically we're always against the same opponent so we almost know what exact run we're gonna see our opponent do it's a matter of like touches sometimes Yeah, that's so gonna be one of my questions for you it's a little tiring to have to battle for touches you know so i don't know i like i like to be judged on the technique where i maybe i hope that the judges see that my technique has something that the others don't have, you know, a technique that has grown and try to be as innovative as possible. How would you say your riding's grown over the years? Like, one of my questions that I had written down was, your riding's totally unique. I can't think of another rider on the planet that moves around the bike like you do, with the velocity that you do. So everyone gets their inspiration from somewhere. Can you like recall any, any time where you were like, yeah, I'm gonna, make a start like this guy and then you went off on your own I just path. remember starting out with the Iggy product and thinking like people see it as BMX but I want to see it as its own thing you know like I don't want to like it's great that it's part of BMX and BMX has like liberated me in so many ways and the freedoms that it brings through freestyle or however you want to call yeah. it but there's something that, that, that plays with acrobatics within BMX Flatland and I thought I want to see the bike develop its own look you know and or bring that back even if it doesn't have to be the noodle frames or however it was yeah, back yeah. then right and that came with the idea that you can move perpetually on your bike like your one movement leads to another movement as long as you're not like uh, that you're not like stopped it, you can keep your balance yeah and from that i guess i'm just developing like the back-to-back -back movement that that one trick feeds off the next trick but it depends on contest riding and video riding is totally different it's not the same. I don't think it's the same. You try to like give a good look on, like a good ens on ensemble ensemble of your riding in a contest, but right. it's, it's not what defines you yeah. as a rider. So I think that's how I felt today, just having fun and like not let it define me because I don't think that it does. So Ninja Spin won that with one of the best runs of the year. Then you went to, I, th I believe it was BMX Cologne and did one of the best runs of the year again. <laughs> like wrote to that Drake tune it totally good, in the yeah, zone <laughs> and like it was almost like a tear moment where you're like BMX Masters and oh, Cologne whatever you want to call you it no I've had the problem that it happens in qualifying and not in finals sometimes so this is my question when you've rode that good does it burden on your mind like how the hell do I replicate that run or do you think I'm not going to replicate that run I'm going to do better somehow Depends on the strategy. You can come in and be like, all right, I'm going to do uh, my run and it's going to be the same run and stick to the script for the finals. But then people have seen that already. And you also feel like, wow, can I do that again? I don't know what's the best option. Because when you don't stick to the script sometimes, then you, you go off the wrong path and then you mess up one trick, which leads to another error. And you should have just stuck to what you were able to do in the first place under yeah. stress and, and the moment that, that is so important. Yeah. Um, fuck, the, the plan is hard to stick to sometimes. Yeah, but do you think with your riding style, it, it's like not as, you could change 
the amount of turbines you do. Do you have this set amount of turbines that you do in a comp contest? Like if if it, if it was for like if I if I had enough breath for me to do a contest combo how I would want to do it, it would be different. Yeah. But since I have to slow it down in certain places so that I can go faster in other places, then it looks the way it does. But yeah. I would rather do like some crazy back-to-back -back stuff the whole time. Like, but so I guess what I'm asking it's tiring, is, you know. You know, I mean, I remember when I used to practice for contests, there was one combo where I wanted to do ten crap pack of turbines, and I would religiously do ten. Yeah. And then I could never do it in a contest. I don't know. I, I don't think I'm obsessed do, so do, much do, with that. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm asking about numbers. Do you? No, I'm you more. Just go with I'm more interested in like the concept and yeah. the, the, the the show and that you can have as many concepts as possible. That that relates to like. The, the whole front wheel back wheel thing that kind of annoys me because the variety is not a variety of doing front wheel or back wheel because if it was that then it should be a variety okay you got to do front wheel got to do back wheel got to do brake brakeless you got to do hopping tricks you yeah. got to do scuffing tricks stationary tricks and you got to do all these things that that really yeah. are not they're not like yeah, relevant they're not relevant to what we're trying to express and what we're trying to express is a variety of concepts that you came up with yeah i mean as much as possible right because yeah. originality still seems to be important so that's what interests me anyway so if you could talk directly to a judge let's say there there was going to be three factors that the judges were looking for what would those most important three be for me yeah in your opinion um and well nothing goes without consistency so that that's obviously going to always be there yeah. you can't do like original trick not landed so cons consistency stays so important but then, like, the consistency of what? Like, it has to be the consistency of something consistent, you know, with substance, right? Yeah. And that substance, what is it made of? It's something, something that you've never seen or as alien as possible. But that, there's a problem with that is that originality gets ugly. To which point are you going to push originality until it gets ugly? You know what I mean? Like, how far do you want to bring it? Because the moment it gets ugly, but what about if it's it doesn't beautiful? matter if it's original anymore. Yeah. But yeah, the movement has to be great. Yeah, yeah, has to be beautiful? graceful. Has to be yeah. elegant. Has yeah. to be a lot of things, man. Like yeah. so, for us to confine it in only a few categories makes it sort of no. I'm just asking, just as simplistic. a simplistic a, a focus. Yeah, I know, but I mean, I always thought elegance should be part of it. You know, yeah. if you look at not to compare it to that, but figure skating, like the way you move, man, is important. Like. Yeah. If you're all sketched out, I mean, some people enjoy that it's a sketchy trick but landed, and I enjoy it too. Then that that makes the crowd go wild because you almost missed it but got it, right? But then it's just to poly be able to polish a movement that you came up with. Yeah. So it's it's a, a bit of both consistency, elegance, originality, and obviously difficulty. But then what else is there? Style, that's part of it too. Like it's it's hard to it's hard to take it apart like that. Yeah. No, I just wanted to ask you. I thought it'd be interesting to get your reaction on what that would be. Yeah, I guess I'm just as confused about it as everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on, one of my questions as well is about f contest floors. You practice on some mm. of what looks like the most perfect floors. So, I guess from the I, way I, I express I it on social media. No, yeah, I grew up riding a marble floor, so I always used to go to contests and have trouble on shitty floors. Like, I could ride to me, yeah, ready for the contest, go to the contest, terrible. Mm. How do you deal with going from a marble floor, which looks like it doesn't have a bump on the whole place, talking about the one in China that you're always at? Like, well, I, I, you I, did the point of view shots coming down on your video last year. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go to like Montpellier, which is notoriously quite a bumpy floor. How, how, do you, how does your riding like, how do you go there with a set plan like, you, you, let's say you practice the forklift, but you go there, you're not able to do it. I can't do it there. I can't do it on most wooden floors because it's just not realistic. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, unless I'm in like a, no, nah, it's just, it doesn't work. Like, I mean, it, the, the balance triangle, right? There's a triangle for balance points, right? There's, there's three points where you touch the bike, mm. right? And it's really small, like it's really narrow triangle yeah. for that one. So any bump kind of throws me off. So especially the moment that I step onto the pedal. So. I mean, and it affects my results, I'm sure, because if there was a good floor and I could do that trick on top of my other tricks, it would help Yeah. to get a better score. So, yeah, I'm, I'm But last year, you it. won almost everything, so... Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't use it except Budapest, yeah. and I used it in Budapest, and I used it in Cologne, because it worked there. But I can't blame that. I mean, we all have to deal with the same rules mm. and the same circumstances. So if the floor is bad, then we all have to deal with a bad floor. But if we're looking at the new World Series, man, it should be flat. Yeah. Well, it's basic. 
A bit flat. -er, should be you know? flat. It should be a bit flat. -er. <laughs> yeah, right. Now it's flat ish. Yeah. So last year, after BMX Masters, what, Fees Edmonton? That's good for us. Which point in the year did you think I, c I can win the, the title overall Fees champion? Do you remember? Well, at the, first, the first stop that I won, I was like, whoa, that puts me in a good spot to keep going on that, on that, yeah, on a roll. And then, and then what? And then, and then Budapest. And then you won in Budapest. So that was it already, I think. No, well, basically I had to d do at least a top five or six at Edmonton for me to win it. Okay. So I wasn't a hundred percent sure because sometimes you have a bad day, right? And shit happens, but. Yeah. But what does it mean? What do you think it means? Does it, uh, it hasn't changed shit in my life. I no, mean, but it's nice to have it. There's like a saying, every dog has his day. You had a whole year. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I was good. When, I think when you're older, you'll look back and be like amazed. It's a little, I don't know, like I heard it so many times, like that was your year, you know, like that was. Yeah. And I, I keep hearing was and I was like. I yeah, you, like, hate, you hate that. Man, right? I've been trying to make it my, my time the whole time, like 15 years ago. I still thought it was my time. I knew you, know you were going to hate that. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not pointing it out about you saying it. I'm just saying that. No, no, no. I'm saying in general, you're saying like, why can't it be my year this year? That's what I mean. I mean, yeah. it's just a matter of terms. Like sometimes words can be hurtful without knowing. You yeah. don't even think about it. You're yeah. trying to say a compliment, but you actually throw it off for the next year, you know, by yeah. saying that was your, your, your year. It's like, damn, man, I wish I had another year. Yeah. <laughs> But it, it's not like that, I guess, at the point where I'm at now, it's not really like about trying to dominate or trying to be the best of all time or that's just, how do you call it? It doesn't last, man. Like, yeah. who's going to remember you in a hundred years? You know, I had this, I forget who came up to me and was like, duh, who's going to remember you in a hundred years? And like, have this realization, <laughs> who's going to remember you Thanks. in a hundred years? Yeah, who's going to remember you me in You get 10? this realization where no yeah. one will remember you in a hundred years. Why yeah. does it fucking matter? Like, why does it matter? Like, Thanks a lot, dude. <laughs> like, you're not Genghis yeah. Khan, you know what I mean? Geng maybe Genghis Khan will be remembered. But except for that, like... So you great. just made me think of a question. So contest riding, how much... Let's talk percentages. How much of it is preparation and how much of it is mindset? I you think there's... Uh, for you well you get you get to a point where you've been doing tricks for a long time so some tricks are really hard to mess up unless you have a, like a bad uh, like uh, obstacles in your way like a really bad floor and then like for me it's very important to watch like blood sugar like just before your contest run and then we were talking about the mood like what mood are you into who are you keeping around you before your contest run yeah. who are you letting getting into your, your vibe before your contest run yeah. Uh, who is trying to get into your vibe before your contest run? So true, yeah. It does make a big difference, you know? And yeah. That's what I mean about the subtle kind of things that are happening at a contest while yeah, while you're getting ready to go for your run. Like, Yeah, I didn't think about that. Don't come up to me and hug me, for example. Earlier, don't come yeah. and hug me before my run, you know what I mean? Yeah. So which out of the contest formats, which do you prefer? The three-minute run or head-to-head -head battle? Which do you think suits you better? Depends, it depends what you're trying your to mood? accomplish with your contest. I think if you're trying to get like a World Series champion in the, in the end run, everyone has to stand for themselves in front of every other competitor. But then if you want to have something that gets the crowd, I guess, more into it, like... But I, I, don't, I don't necessarily feel like the crowd gets more into a battle format. They do sort of, but not everybody wants to take one side. They just want to see everybody do their best. You know, and that's do you think it's easier from a spectator point of view? Maybe they can see, like, for example, if one guy fucks up and another guy, they can understand. Yeah, it, it. just makes me if feel like a beauty pageant. You know, like yeah. who's the most beautiful girl in town? Like you like this one, you like blue, you like red. It's, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of obsolete for flatland. It's not like it doesn't really fit. Do you like, think it's three like, it's is like more flatland of a test? trying to be something that we're not, mm. trying to be breakdance or we're trying to be like hip hop, rap, freestyle battles. Like we're not that. I'm riding a bike. Let, give me my time, get out of my way, let me do what I gotta do. You can do your same exact thing when it's your turn. And we don't need the obstacle of someone throwing arrows at you and make you feel like, you know. But, but hey, flat arc was a good result though, I'm really happy with We're gonna that. get to that. I always thought the three minute run was a challenge. I can remember the amount of times I was having a really good run and then the last 30 seconds goes to shit. But when it goes well, do you think like the three minute run is the ultimate test? 
Like three minute, like uh, the the format, like now at bike days. Yeah. Like, do you feel like if you ride flawless, like? Here's how I would like to see it happen. We get one minute run. We get two tries. Okay. All right. Like, okay, let's take one run. If you touch, like it's one run in one minute. You understand? One combo. One combo in one minute. Right. That's how you got to do it. Everything you wanted to put inside your, your, your run has to be within that run within that one minute. Okay. That'd be cool, no? Yeah. Because when you start your run at the three two minute tries run, you have a lot of juice when you start in the first minute. Two Why tries. not just go for one minute or 45 seconds even. One freaking run, you get two two runs, three runs, or however you want to make this contest happen. This is just a like a, an idea, right? What about training? That'd be cool. I would love to yeah. do that contest where like, You're you know, like so next much. year there's going to be this contest. There's a 10,000 whatever dollar yeah. prize money or whatnot. We have one run. It has to be one minute. You can't touch. You can't stop. It's only one run. That'd be cool, man. I think. Why don't we try it? I mean, what's to lose? That would be, that would be fun. No, yeah. I, I always think about that where like, okay, if you touch, you get another try for that try. You know, you get one try. You get one touch. You mess it up. You get one more try. If you touch again, you're out. You yeah. know what I mean? The same way that like uh, park, like the if, best park, if, if, if they touch in park, they lose like 25% of their points. Oh, do they? Yeah. We shouldn't be touching basically. Yeah. What about, so the way you ride, the energy, how hard was it for you to get to like the point where you're like throwing flawless three minute runs? Because you're, some of the guys ride around for like, I'm going to say 25 seconds to get there. You don't do that. I do that sometimes though. But not, I feel like rare. I, I feel like it's a long time. It's rare know, when you, sure you're like it's... hacking into tricks, like so much speed. and It's crazy because I would get a different perspective. I'm like, I feel like I've been like rolling around. I would, I long. would say you, that you're predominantly doing tricks for at least two minutes 40 out of three minutes, which is high. Well, that's good to know. So I'm not trying to sort of get a picture. How long did you think it took you to get to that point where you're like ready to gun, guns blazing? Yeah, it took 15 years basically. But I wish that it wasn't that much about contest riding as it is right now, you know? So, so what would you like it to be about? I just feel like the whole perception of what Flatland is, is so focused on contest results that it mm. kind of twists the whole vibe of our community around. Mm. Like you were saying, you haven't seen it like a, a session, a circle session, or what is it called? Jam circle. A jam circle in 10 years. Yeah. Like just now it was like, like Cologne, it was yeah. 30 minutes after the contest. There was no one there like riding. Yeah. What's going on? Where's the jams at? Where's where's the, the soul? You know what it's I mean? It's gone, yeah. It's just, it's not that, I, I wouldn't go that far, but it's just shifted to different places yeah. where they don't have contests. Those places keep the heart pumping, man. That, that like, if you go to like uh, Chile and you go to Brazil and you, you be places that I haven't been, but I just get that feeling that there's still that, that soul of Flatland that they enjoy together. You know, in France also, I think they get good, good uh, jam circles. I mean, I haven't been everywhere. I don't understand it, but I think it's more about that, right? Yeah. Or even just video parts, some cool video stuff that is not focused on making it like so nice production, but more like the, nice tricks. The, the hardcore. Nice element. tricks. Yeah. Like your I last mean, part. But I like a nice production as well. Yeah. But a nice production doesn't give you the time to actually do the tricks that you would want to put into it. Yeah, the substance. Yeah. So there, there's. There's a lot that goes into making a rider, but what is going to be absorbed usually by people is your contest results. Mm. Uh, and they'll compare you to, to a few other guys that are out there. So I've got to ask Flat Arc. I feel like that was the big one for you. I had, a lot, of, I had a lot of built up anger, so. A lot of history. Yeah. And that then, was my fourth time, fifth time, fourth time going to Flat Arc, I think. Yeah. And then, so. Yeah, I don't want to go too deep into that. You, you beat Yuchi in the semi final, which was obviously a big deal Do you, can you remember like your emotion like you beat Yuchi in the semi-final and then you're thinking what you're thinking this is this is on yeah I mean at that point I just uh, I learned a lot from the the, the previous ones like the, the 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 year before I did really bad like I just messed up every trick and the year before that I got really close to where I wanted to get but the like I know that like it gets really cold in flat arc now like it's like November or yeah. first week of November so I'm moving in the back like I'm just non-stop moving because I know how I felt the when I went year. out there and everything cramped up because I was cold yeah and then I had too much like uh, sugar or something and not enough water like the mix of water and sugar is so important like it's 
Yeah, that's interesting. I used to think that I'm just hallucinating these things yeah. and this perception that, that is so important, but actually it's for everything. Like you need a good, you need to be hydrated, but you need sugar. And then your brain needs the sugar, but your, your muscle needs the water. And you need to keep, keep a good balance between those before your run. And then your run comes and then you, know, you have to be <laughs> ready by then. You know? So oh. then also you did the, the forward death truck on the pedal and then you came out on the other side. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What a time to do it in the final. Like, yeah, I was happy, man. Brand, yeah, I was really if happy. If I remember about rightly, that. it was pretty brand new. Yeah, like, I never did it in a contest before. It was the first time, right? That rodeo trick, I never did it in a contest either because I just can't. I remember we were in Barcelona the first time you pulled that, you remember? <laughs> yeah. And I was gonna, I was leaving. And I took so you one. Turned back. <laughs> I turned back to look, take one last look and you pull it. I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, that was that's insane. Cool. That so was a good moment. If you had to so you can it, ride that wave for a while after, like when you get a good trick like that for a long time. I don't know, it's not that it's the greatest trick of all time, it's just that... It was a journey for you. I've been doing it a long time and it's still not how I want it and I'm still working on like to get where I... You know why I learned the forklift thing in the first place? It was because I'm still trying to get where I'm going with that trick, which I still can't get there too. I don't know if it's a matter of just like doing the wrong, the same error every time. Or like, you know when you practice a trick? So am I. And you keep doing the same error because you don't realize that you're not trying it differently. Yeah. You know, that, that, that might be one of my problems sometimes, like where like, I'm trying to move like, move your knee a little bit more in, try to close the circle a little bit more, try to like widen the turbine before going back forwards and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Those things make a big difference. So you win flat arc, you beat Vicky in the final. If that's not enough, then you, <laughs> you must be thinking, ah, oh, I'm ready for the season to be over and just get new tricks for the next season. You go to battle in the Rockies. Yeah, it was a good year. And you win that also, but the biggest thing there was the battle with Austin was awesome. Yeah, Austin is coming coming up real quick, man. He's been practicing hard. But like I, no I noticed it pushed you quite a lot and you were busting out brand new tricks. Again, yeah, you mean, were like... I didn't feel like uh, so much pressure as Flat Arc, obviously. And I know that Austin has a certain bag of tricks. And I know that it might be hard for him to beat me at that moment and that I can probably just relax more, but try new things mm. so I don't want to like downplay his writing or anything it's just like I've been doing this a lot longer than he has in and, more experience, but he's yeah. coming up quick so it's I don't know it was it was nice because it, it, it seemed gave, like it pushed you though it did push me but it pushed me in the right direction where like well, well I, I, I can feel like I I can go for something different now like I don't feel like I don't I don't want to say that I didn't feel pressure I did because mm. he's a really good writer but I felt like I had enough like uh, space to, to, to try also to Also the vibe was pretty good as well. Yeah, I don't feel like we were under any tension or nothing like that. I don't I don't want to say it was easy or nothing like that. No, yeah, I understand. Obviously, yeah. But obviously like when I did Battle Moto the previous two years, that was a lot tense. harder, you know? It was a lot more tense because I know his bag of tricks and he knows mine. So we know that we have to do a lot to like, to, to, to beat each other. And he beat me twice and he wasn't there last year to, to try again. You know? Yeah, if you had to pick a rider, who's the hardest guy you've ever battled? In battles? Where you just think, one mistake and it's done. I mean, I, when I was just a beginning pro, those were impossible for me, so I can say that. Uh, yeah. My first pro contest was Fight with Flight in 2010 in Indianapolis. Yeah, and then when we competed. And then I had I to compete. battle, I had battled, I forget who I battled, but that was my first pro comp. And then I, I met you in uh, Jumbo Pro. We were both in the final, that was pretty cool. And I remember thinking then, wow, this guy's gonna make it. One day, but make it in what sense, you know? Monetary wise? Like, I mean, in the, the um, sense that you Is the overall vibe of making it? <laughs> I mean, in the sense that you're gonna dominate the scene, which... In Flatland, I don't think many people are making it, like as a contest writer, like why did Justin quit? Why aren't people, why, why are people doing shows instead of competing? Because there's, up to this point, maybe UCI will change this whole process with funds coming from our national teams or whatnot yeah that, we're that, might, seeing that, that might make a difference right like i've been traveling a lot so i haven't put much thought I'm into already it. seeing that in uh, british cycling actually they've put full funding into into bmx yeah so who's writing for the team in they the, have in um the uk mark webb ben wallace jack clark declan brooks and that means that they get to James travel Jones. for free right yeah like, see that makes a big difference now Every, that plus salary. it's officializing you know plus salary then that means everything yeah. then that's when you make it see that that would be like if i if i yeah i should have been doing it already but if make those moves so do you think flatlands that ready would be making it that would be more making it in 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 a like kind of like you're living and getting gaining like the the finance that you need to make a living mm. from make from doing flatland contest but that's not what it's been for me 
and it's not been since last year because winning of all that it hasn't changed much you know? yeah so i think that's what keep that's the, this is what i was kind of trying to drive at. struggle alive you know is that's why i think you're, you're a little bit different i always look at you like the underdog that's why people were like so i still i tell you i still feel like that I still because you're like not underdog yeah you you can see the struggle when you and you can see the emotion when you win it's it's that's nice to see yeah, I think the moment that you win and you're just like, mm, that's it, I got another one. That like, always looks that, a bit strange that, when guys that, that are on the podium. That would be awful to anybody for doing that, you know? I always think it looks strange from me doing flat matters online and remembering my face when I won a contest, I was so stoked. Mm. And you see guys like, they're almost like bored. You're like, it, don't think that helps the image of the sport. It's like... Whereas when you won flat up, I think the picture I had on the website was you were screaming and I'm like, I'm going to use that one. <laughs> tell you why I'm yeah, going to use like, that one. Uh, that was the moment I'm like, hey, mom, yes, I made I'll tell you why I'm going to use that one. Is because it tells a story. Yeah, the little glories of Flatland, man. That's what it is, you know. But it's a big glory, though. Yeah, but like I said, man, in 100 years, we're going to remember that shit. Bah, 100 years is a long time, though. It's all about how you feel when you're doing it now. But yeah. it's, it's not about, like, perpetrating your name into infinite history, you know. If that was what it was, then... That would be the battle that I wouldn't want to fight. I so do you think, um, you meant, you touched on the UCI, do you think Flatland's ready to be in the Olympics? Um, I don't know, that would be 2024 if there's a chance, or 2028? 2024, I think, Paris. Yeah, so that might happen. I think it's possible. Yeah, so. Especially with the UCI if it's series. Ready, it, it might be ready by then. Yeah. Now it's still a bit, uh, dodgy or how you want to call it what would what would you like to see if change you talked about the contest floor would you like to what? i would love it to be like a granite floor man like yeah sure i guess should that be a standard that should be the standard because wood ain't working for anybody mm. if you take everybody that was that was riding at a the last contest with a wooden floor you sit them all there in front of you and you ask them who liked the floor how was it did you like the floor raise your hand you probably wouldn't see that many hands yeah. up but it should be the opposite right yeah the everyone floor should the floor stuck, should yeah. please everyone we should all yeah. have the right tool to, ri to, to ride with so if it's going to go to the olympics then take the whole wooden platform formula and throw it in the trash <laughs> and think it all over again yeah. because that's not working out i guess it came from circle of balance they made a wooden floor and then yeah that's right yeah. people got into that yeah. and thought that that was the best but the circle of balance floor in japan it was crap it was not good. They had sand in the paint. And oh, it was yeah, yeah, super yeah. grippy. Yeah, and like, if you yeah. fell, you like ripped your, your skin open. So, yeah. yeah, so that's not a good model to go from. I think we just need to rethink the whole thing. Mm. Like, what is the best flatland floor there is? What I ride is granite. Granite is the best. Yeah, granite, got, I would agree. You got grip, no friction. We need that. Yeah. I mean, we need that. And then it has to be flat. Yeah. We're riding flatland, obviously. Not flat-ish. Flatland. I mean, it's so important. Yeah. That's beyond important. That's like the most important thing there is. We ride flatland, give us a flat floor, and people will be able to realize their full potential. Yeah, totally. So everything you do seems to have, well, it does have a lot of integrity, such as the Real City Spin as well. Tell me a little bit about the Real City Spin and what you told me earlier about why you stopped doing it. That's pretty interesting. Well, what was it? You were talking about how you thought like the event couldn't grow in it to any more. I mean, I don't want to bring, I don't want to make something and bring it to a point where people are just like, oh, again, you know, mm. like you see it in a lot of events where like the first few editions are like, wow, that was nice. That was sick, man. I'll remember that the rest of my life. And then after like three or four, it's always like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter if I miss that one, you know? Mm. Uh, so, but it, it was a bit of that. And then, then it was a bit of. A lot of things like money wise there was like becoming a lot of pressure and hard to find people to like work passionately on it with me you know and you need dedication you need people that are dedicated to the sport that see what it could become in the future working with you and developing something with a common goal and that's something that let's say we look at flat arc in japan they seem to have it kind of dialed with a good team and project management and that's everything you know yeah but coming from the ground up like i just i didn't see the support that i needed to keep going and then it was really draining me and then the next year that i the, the last year i stopped and then last year look what happened yeah you know totally focused on the events so 
Makes sense. But I don't need to win forever, man. Like, it's not about that. It's really not about that. But I do want to be out there and competing and people seeing me and, and I still want to put products out and people see the products and see that they're good for, like, a more modern style, you know, like a more modern flatline. Let's define flatline ourselves. Like, let's not let, like, other sports define what we are, like, mm. other disciplines of the sport, you know, because yeah. it's the same sport. No, we're flatline. We got our own thing going, you know, and that's cool. That, that's what makes us us. Yeah. We keep our community, like... Us. So I've got to ask, the nickname Dub, where does that come from? <laughs> it's just Dub from W, from William. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just my name. That. Yeah, my name's too long, and then someone's just like, J Dub. And then, oh, yeah, Dub, hey, Dub. <laughs> oh, I wondered if it was connected to your rap stuff. No, no, I don't rap. <laughs> yeah. Are you still doing that? No, I love to write music, it's nice, but it's time consuming, but Flatland come, consumes too much time, so I haven't had much time. Yeah. But I always wanted to make music. I started making music before Flatland. I started writing it was like all in the same year but I started making music first there comes a time when you need to make a decision what you want to do in life and I chose BMX and what about what's a regular day for you going into a competition how, mu how much training do you, you do man like it is not, recently hasn't been really a regular day in my life in a month since Hiroshima I've been on the road since has it been a month yeah Oh, okay, then. I'll be on the road for a month and a half, and I haven't. The only routine that I had was in Shenzhen, where I had like 12 days where I could ride every day at the time that I wanted to ride. Mm. So yeah. That, so what's a good what's a good day? What would you typically? But ride? it wouldn't be a contest preparation day. Like I get really bored with that. So, so you don't do that, I guess. That's my no, question. No, I've done it, but I don't overdo it because yeah. then like it seems to just make my life so black and white and boring. So what do you do? I guess everybody wants to know at home. What does Dub do? You just go to the spot and ride, right? Well, now I'm just trying to learn tricks for Pluto Flat. Yeah? Yeah. So that's what I've been doing. Learn new stuff. More of the back-to-back -back stuff that seems like unprobable to connect them together and then connect them together at like high speed. Yeah, know? amazing. That's nice. Because that's, that's what I mean. Like the movement needs to be beautiful. I like seeing the movement become like improbable you know and the movement makes another trick yeah because when, when you when you I can see if you're yeah. going straight and you pivot it makes sense if you're going straight change direction then pivot that opens doors like crazy yeah that makes a I lot know, yeah. that makes a lot of difference like only that one fact can change the whole style yeah. so that, that that's one realization that i had and you can do on this foot on this foot forwards backwards whatever you want to do you know? on so the you, pedal you can do on the pedals too so. you just mentioned puro flat one of the best videos of the year already can already say that absolutely Thanks. retarded i was shocked when i watched it and it made me feel like a kid again because <laughs> i still get excited when i when i'm surprised and i don't get surprised very often you see the same tricks all the time it's nice when you see a rider like yourself at the top of your game boom hit a surprise what was your so what was what the surprise just the way you, you linked stuff together and I'm like I think when you did like a, a, the movement you did at 110 I remember I was watching 110 and I'd message you and I'm like oh you, the, you, you, the Undertaker thing there? yeah but it was like the way you did it and then it was like it was short but you yeah. knew hold on he's gonna push it again later on in the video no I just yeah and I was just like people, whoa that was I think a lot of people missed that one that maybe, was it yeah. that was Oh, but that took a while. That was the beginning of the winter. I started working on that one. It's like oh. a, I don't know. I guess like a rever I call it reverse Undertaker. Yeah. Where this hand is holding it from the back, and then it's beautiful. It passes underneath, and you land it like that. But Undertaker has been a journey for me, man. It's been great because I thought, yeah, nobody's doing Undertakers. Like nobody was doing Undertakers. No. And I just thought the you did the inside switch B, and the, but you you hold it out too. Was that like a conscious thing to say? This one? Yeah, the inside switch beam. Yeah, sometimes they hold it extended as long as possible, but it's, it becomes really wobbly because you're just holding onto the, the bars like that, yeah. and that's already moving, and it's straight like that. Yeah. But I thought, man, no one's un doing Undertakers. First, I'm like, what's an Undertaker? <laughs> you know, like Undertaker, well, it sounds so cool, no? Like, I, there's a lot of flatland names that I for tricks that I don't like, but Undertaker sounds good. Yeah. It's one of those that I Some like. Some of the names are terrible. Yeah, yeah. and then... I'm like I get into it and I start looking at it and like man nobody's doing it rolling really or is that how it is called rolling, rolling undertaker yeah nobody's doing it rolling right by then I think nah. so I'm like no one's doing it rolling it just seems pretty similar to something I'm already doing so I just learn it and then it then came to like out to switch foot or whatever it's called to everything and then there was one video I put like eight new variations of the undertaker and then like but you did the 540 pivot yeah but too, then try then... to do the like there's other ideas like okay who's gonna do crossfoot undertaker rolling that shit's hard man <laughs> uh 
Like just just thinking about it, like go backwards. But then turbine Undertaker, so like I really got into Undertaker, and that was fun. That was a journey. I'm not done, but like it hurts my it hurts to do it too much. So yeah. I don't do other things like we're on the pedal and stuff. And so we we can expect another video by the end of the year. You what? The Puro flat. Yeah, I, I thought I explained it. I was probably doing like one per season. So I'm looking at like four. Wow, really? Yeah. That's hard to do with, with the contest though. Yeah, and all the traveling. But there's going to be a calm period soon where it's going to be pretty chill. Mm. So I don't have to go to everything either. Yeah, uh, well, there's well, a lot of good stuff uh, coming up, man. Like uh, not only for what me, are you focused for, on this year then? I don't know, man. A lot of things just seem to send me in certain directions, like. I don't know, I get bored with contests from, it seems that it's always the same people, you know, like, I get that, like, I see people telling us that it's always the same people. And it's basically a lot of the same contests with the same judges and the same riders a lot of the times now, so. Yeah. It's just like, what's going on, you know, like, that's yeah. not very stimulating. You want something new. It's just stressful, but not so stimulating. Yeah. It's fun, it's, it is stimulating in a, in a way, but it's not, like, stimulating, like, trying 10,000 times and landing it and that stimulation of a new trick that's that's pretty stimulating you know because then you get a good night's sleep keeps you, you know? young yeah, it keeps you a good night's sleep you know you had a good trick landed it tried for so long that night's sleep is totally worth it a little celebration yeah there's people there I don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the little joy a couple that's of bars why, that's why I'm just saying the little glories of Flatland but those are everything you know like my dad passed 8 years ago and at the end he was just he was working on huge projects man like Developing a ski resort in the northeast of China and then okay. developing, a, developing a city of the energy in France when he was wow. a bit younger and all these big projects he would sit for weeks at a time like working on the project yeah. in the end just realized that all this that stuff ain't nothing man like, yeah. I mean, the, good, the good stuff is the simple things of everyday life that yeah it's beautiful so the same for Flatland it's the, the simple things of everyday life that, that make it worth it you know it wasn't about those small sessions that you have a peaceful mind and you feel good as yourself. What would the contest session be? That wouldn't be shit. Yeah. Because then if it was always like that, that wouldn't be the sport I wanted to be part of. Yeah. Do you, um, we talked about it earlier, coming from Canada. Do you feel like any pressure to like emulate the Canadian heroes? The, one of the best countries in the world historically for Flatland. You talk about Chase, Andrew Farris, Corey Fester, Jason Brown, rest in peace, Jason Brown, Stefan Royer. There's so many. I'm forget Dan Rigby, Nathan Pannonze, Nathan Pannonze, Jeff DeRose, Jeff DeRose, Simon Marsan, Simon Marsan. Yeah, he's sick. But <laughs> do you feel any like responsibility to like? Yeah, I'm flying the flag. Like, never think of it like that. Or <laughs> yeah, I think you seem like you would be Canadian proud. I always think the Quebec flag is up there too. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm from England, Cause, uh, so tell the, me. Because the Quebec flag never really flew, so there it is, <laughs> you know, in Flatland. That's awesome. So, but Simon Marsden was no, from Quebec, right? Yeah, but he yeah. never really pushed it to a point where put Quebec on the map that much. You yeah. know, and only in the region. Yeah. But people, but see, me, no, but people see me as from Canada. You know, I have an accent when I speak English. I mean, I, I'm French in, in the first place, right? Yeah. Look at my name, but yeah. And, our, and, and Quebec is seven times the size of France. So it's, it's, in a funny it's way, worthy of its own flag. You know? in, a, in a way, you do remind me a little bit of Nathan Pononzak in the sense that you can speak a lot of languages. How many languages can you speak? Four. That's pretty cool. What, Chinese what? is I'm proud of. Yeah. It's really hard. And That's amazing. I try to learn as much as possible still now with the, the applications that are available to us and stuff like that. So out of, out of the year, how long are you actually at home, would you say? I don't know. Last year, probably 35%. So China's second home? I don't know, not, not, not recently, not much. Mm. But China was, I probably spent five years total, six years total of my life in China, in total of like going back and forth. I've been to China over 25, maybe 20, 25 times. I've been to Japan eight times now, I've been to Indonesia five times, I've been a few places like, uh, and it's good to see that Flatland is still bumping like here and there. What do you say to kids that like want advice from you like, how to make it in the contest scene and like maybe just how to apply themselves. What do you say to all the kids at home that look up to you? Because I get so many messages from, you know, kids that are maybe like 14, 15, hey frame, like 
how do I get how do I get into get into flatland? What do you say to those people? I feel like you need really good tires and a light bike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, because uh, you ride a really light bike, right? Yeah, like 16 pounds. Yeah. I think that the problem is that the complete bikes people are getting is not cutting it for them, and then they just get the wrong impression yeah. of flatland. Hey, you ever rode flatland with a bulky 30 pounder bike? I have, yeah. It's hard, man. Yeah, it kills your <laughs> Especially back. Especially if you're trying to spin now because they see spins, they want to spin, then it they kills get your back. the tires are low pressure and everything is sort of wobbly and it's like that kind of what's keeping people away from flatland is like the lack of information when they first start. Yeah. They start with a bad bike and after a few sessions they're just like, man, I just don't know about the sport and then they, they stop riding. So invest at least, I don't know. I got a pretty good bike for sale right now. It's like a thousand US. Okay. I, I, that's 21 pounds. I mean, something like that. You know, don't yeah. worry, I'm not trying to sell nothing. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. All but right, I we're going to yeah. wrap yeah. it up here with Dub. Thanks a lot, Dub. Congratulations on all the awards. And thanks all for the running Flat Matters, man. It's cool that you still do it. Yeah, it's labor and, uh, of love. Yeah. I love it. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you made it to this point, much love and respect. Keep riding. Everybody made it to this point, Dub. I'm telling you, everyone's <laughs> watching this. Everyone. Just the people don't comment. That's what's up. Send <laughs> you, us a comment. You and me. <laughs> Thanks for that, Dub. That was amazing. Cool. That was really good. It was just natural.